welcome to the Faroe Islands. First stop was Mulafossa Waterfall, underneath Casadalo, which is as far west as you can drive on Vega. The town, home to 11 permanent residents as of 2020, and surrounded by the highest mountain on Vega. It was a moody middle of the day and I was keen to make the most of the choppy seas. This wave creating a leading line up to the cliffs was good timing. I was just hoping the choppy sea lasted until golden hour. In the meantime, we explored the beach at Boer, a small village on the road to Gassadalor, with the views across to Drangania and Tindholme. A view which led us quickly to decide that our upcoming trip to Drangania would be by boat rather than on foot. Still pretty moody, I wanted to get down low and catch the incoming waves to create a foreground for the amazing sea stacks and also some of the houses up above with the grass roofs. Golden hour was closing in, so we headed back through the tunnel to Gasadalo, hoping that the sea had maintained its ferocity. My first evening is at Mulafossa waterfall, and the little town up there, I think it's Gasaldo. Uh, please, my pronunciation is going to be horrific, so uh, you're going to have to deal with it. It's coming up to sunset. This is a sunset location as it's on the west coast and the sea today is extremely choppy. Um, the winds and gusts have been high, but just as we're getting to golden hour, it's starting to clear and hopefully the sun will poke through and provide some nice light. It go in this way onto the waterfall. Uh, I want to try and catch some big splashes from the waves as well. There isn't much to say about the composition here. It's been done a million times, but I just really wanted to come and video this place and photograph this place not just video but i am videoing on my new camera that's probably why i said it just past the danger signs do not go down these steps i did the classic bum shuffle down to the rocks below keen to get underneath the waves crashing against the cliffs i was just holding my a74 and didn't take a lot else down with me. I tried to film, but the audio is terrible, so you've got this voiceover instead. The sea was still super choppy, and the clouds had parted to let through the last of the day's sun. I couldn't have asked for better conditions at this location. Kaz was watching on from above as the waves crashed against the rocks right next to me, a couple of times crashing meters above my head. I'll just zoom in and show you in case you missed where I was standing. The shots from the lower rocks were amazing, especially when you catch the waves crashing against the cliff with a fast shutter speed. Cresting waves on their way into the coastline had their spray backlit by the setting sun. The colors were incredible and even did a bit of zooming in for some simple, more abstract shots. Having made it back up to safety, where most of the coach trip participants take a quick iPhone snap, by this time the light was getting even better and I took the classic shot of Mulafossa with Gatadalo in the background and there were some insane clouds setting over Mikines in the distance. So I got the bazooka out and took a few more snaps. The light was just awesome on this shot and I managed to catch the big splash from above but these were the clouds over my Keens. It was, oh, I just don't know. Incredible light, just this weird, huge cloud. I was, I, I don't know what to say. I just love the colors. I love the mood, it's amazing stuff. Day two, and I'm at another location, this time and I'm going to butcher this, it's called Trollkunu Finger, or the Witch's Finger. There's a myth in these Faroe Islands that a witch came up out of the sea to try and throw the Faroe Islands towards Iceland, but then, I don't know, got knocked out and fell back into the sea, and that's her finger. It's not a long walk. 
you have to park in the town of Santa Vega and walk up the road, which turns into a path, which then leads you to this fence off area, which gives you the best view of the finger. As I'm currently looking east, this is a perfect place for a sunrise location. But if you come in sort of winter time-ish, then the sun will be low enough in the sky that you'll get good light at any time of day. In terms of compositions at this location, it is probably very difficult to get anything different to what everyone else who just been walking up here and taking a quick snap with an iPhone. The best bet is to try and wait for some decent conditions. I don't know if it's still doing it behind me, Kaz, but are the clouds coming over the top? The far ones? Literally for five minutes, we had some clouds coming over the top mountains and the sun was just lighting up the finger on its own. Nice, I took a couple of shots. And maybe if the sea is choppy and there's a big swell, you'll get some nice uh, waves crashing up against the cliffs at the bottom there. But apart from that, it'll be very difficult to try and get anything different to other people. It's a lot about trying to catch the right conditions at this location. Just a look at the colour of that sea. So this was the one shot where we had about 30 seconds of sunlight, just enough for this shot. But the clouds were really moody and started coming up and over the cliffs. I really like this one, it does look a bit like a watercolour painting. You might be mistaken for thinking, oh he's just in a cloud. Well, I am just in a cloud. I am at Sornfelli, excuse the pronunciation, the car park is just over there, the road to the car park is pretty wild and I'm meant to get a really nice view down towards the fjords, the sea and even the witch's finger literally sort of right behind me but at the moment I see nothing and um, yeah it's also pretty windy, I'm not sure if you can quite see how quickly this cloud is coming up and over this ridge, but I'm gonna wait here for a little while with my camera. Yeah, see, that's just cloud. That is just cloud putting a lot of moisture onto the lens of oh, this pocket here, like two seconds. Oh, it has just got brighter, which means that the cloud might break any second now. So I've got my camera here and I'm just waiting for the opportune moment to get a nice dramatic view down through the Faroe Islands. Fingers crossed that the sun will light it up nicely. There'll be a bit of cloud underneath me as well for a bit of atmosphere. Really struggling with this wind and microphone, so sorry about the audio if it's crap. There were brief moments just when you could peek through the clouds and see what the landscape was behind. Well, we've just got to persevere with the weather here because it can change in an instant. And literally, like pulling the screen back at a matinee, just revealed the most amazing view. Look at that, on top of the world here. The sun is pretty bright at the moment, making this very difficult. Hopefully it just goes behind a sheet of cloud and sort of diffuses itself is at the moment this is very difficult high dynamic range conditions but the view is incredible look at this we did trek up a little further up onto the ridge from the car park i didn't stay there too long because any foreground opportunity was literally just the ridge after sunset, I put up the drone and took a, a little bit of B-roll, but unfortunately most of the light had left at that point. But I, I was concentrating on taking photos while the sun was setting, so that's probably why. But those sun rays, what luck I had that evening. The views back towards Vega are breathtaking from the car park. Crazy if you go up higher like I was a bit earlier. This is a view from the top ridge. The sun rays are still there and there were some other hikers which I managed to get in shot also. 
But the piece de resistance was this shot. Leading lines, incredible light, incredible sky, and that view down the fjord. Just, just perfect. Day three and we're in Bos de la Fossa waterfall. It's a walk that you have to pay for. It was a hundred, 200 kroner each, I think it was. And it's about an hour walk from the place where you can park your car. Very easy hike across. And you could get the Trilinapina. Trilinap, Trilinapina? I'm gonna need my phone for this. It's Trilinipa, which is just up there. That gives the illusion where the biggest lake on the Faroe Islands is actually above the sea and the cliffs going down to the sea. We'll be going up there later for sunset. And this is Bos de la Fossa waterfall, which is actually the lake coming out into the sea down there. Composition here is fairly limited because you don't want to go too close to the edge and fall into the sea. There are stories of tourists that have done so. So if you do come to this location, make sure that you're very safe. But I have been experimenting with the 16 to 35 and I've got some lovely compositions. Mostly in vertical portrait as this landscape sort of is very tall and I think a vertical um, portrait composition is probably best for this location. I've also experimented with shutter speeds. Again, I think the one to two seconds, maybe just under one second is really nice for the texture. But today the sea is quite choppy and actually I'm getting some massive splashes coming back off the cliff just in front of the waterfall. Like that one, if you can see it. And I'm trying to go from one five hundredth to a second to faster if I can, pushing the ISO a little to try and get um, a, a freeze frame of that. And I might blend a couple of exposures together, some for the texture in the water and the faster shutter speed ones for the splashes on the side. Not much light here, it's a bit meh at the moment. Hopefully towards sunset, it is currently 20 to five in the afternoon now. We've got another couple of hours and a probably a coffee and a nice tub of tortellini to have before we head up to Trila Nipper. Trila Nipper and shoot sunset at the cliffs. The light wasn't the best, but I did have fun playing around with different exposure times to create those crazy textures in the sea. It was on the way up towards Trilonipa that I turned back and finally saw some nice light on the cliffs. So we stopped and I switched to the bazooka around about here. I sent Kaz back onto the last ridge I could see for some perspective compression and then a simple zoomed in composition also just making the most of that glow coming off the back of the rain. The final spot for the day, Trilonipa. Incredibly tall sea cliffs with, I'm going to attempt this, Sovagsvdam Lake above them. Let's just call it the big lake. As you can see, the sun never really made an appearance and it was a bit flat, but you've got to make the most of the hand you dealt. To get the best shot, it's a little precarious next to the edge. Definitely about a thousand times higher than I would be comfortable cliff jumping from. I found a rock to perch on and I could reach forward and get a clean foreground. I also met a bunch of guys from Portugal. One of them ran round to get in shot. Literally ran. You can just make him out in the centre of the shot here. Day four, and I'm at Fossa. So Fossa is the tallest waterfall in the Faroe Islands, uh, coming in at about 300 meters in two levels. I'm not sure you can see the top level, maybe just about see it from here, but the waterfall isn't quite as voluptuous as it can be. 
it's running a little bit low at the moment because there hasn't been much rain in the past few days. I think a better time of year to come and see this may be just after winter when all of the snow is melting and there's a glut of water coming into the waterways here. This will be overflowing like mad and with a good bit of wind, it'll be blowing everywhere and it will look really dramatic. But today, it's a little bit lackluster, but still, I think I can get some nice shots. It's a very easy place to get to. Literally park right next to it. There's a big picnic bench. Just had some lunch with some two amazing Italian blokes that we actually met yesterday at Bosta La Fossa. The best way to try and get a composition here is to maybe try and put a person in the frame to accentuate the scale or, or you know, the, the sheer height of this waterfall. Most of the photos you'll take at this location will be in portrait. I've got a little bit of time to shoot this video as I've just sent Kaz, thankfully, off on a little route. It's about 15 minutes walk up and around and she's gonna try and get on the middle layer. And what I'll do is put the long lens on, maybe 50 to 100 mil, zoom in, and from the other side of the road, I will hopefully get her on the edge and in between the two waterfalls. So we'll see how that goes, but fingers crossed that'll be a nice shot. So grateful Kaz took the time to clamber up and around. Having a person in shot here really helps give you a sense of how big this waterfall actually is. Of course, the six pound yellow jacket from Tesco doing a great job of setting her apart from the black volcanic rock. This is a great place to come if the weather's a little bit moody or a little bit windy. Today when we woke up, it was just cloud. We couldn't see anything and it, it was just a great idea to come to this waterfall as it's not dependent on having a nice sunset or a nice sunrise. You can just come here in the middle of the day and get some fantastic shots. I would bring an ND filter, maybe try and smooth out some of the lower waterfalls and get like some nice texture in the foreground. I've tried to do that a little bit today um, and then also use a faster shutter speed for the actual waterfall itself and blend those two together. That's my plan, whether it'll work, you're about to find out. So here's the two shots I blended. One short exposure for the waterfall and a longer exposure for the foreground water but not too long that I lose the texture. The end result I think is pretty epic. The smoother foreground is not too aggressive and leads you up nicely to the waterfall above being blown about by the wind. I also managed to get Kaz involved again, this time around the bottom of the waterfall. Again, here I was using a person in frame as a point of reference to show you how big the waterfall actually is. A few days later, however, the conditions at Fossa were even better. So as you can see, it's a stormy day. I'm getting blasted by hail and wind. And yeah, there's not much that you can do today. We were gonna go up Calsoy. We were gonna go up Calsoy today. That's a, a place up by the lighthouse. I really wanted to go, but there's no way that we're gonna ridge walk in these gusts and this storm. It's just way too dangerous. So we're just having a drive about and we thought we'd come past Fossa. And today it's not a waterfall, it's a, it's a water jump. It's, it's incredible. So the wind's coming down the fjord. It's, it's a westerly sort of storm that's coming through. So it's coming straight down this fjord and absolutely blowing Fossa all over the place. There's no traffic. So I'm gonna run across and show you what it's looking like. And I'll whip off this wide angle lens, you can't really see it. So I'm gonna try and film it with the, uh, the long lens and my uh, ZVE-1. See the two levels, the, the, the uppermost level is, is going up a lot more than the lower. It's a bit more exposed. More cars, more winds, gusts. But most of the water that's coming down is blowing back up into the stream above. It's like a perpetual waterfall. No, now I look silly. So I don't know if you can hear me. I don't know if you can see anything. I'm gonna try and take some video of that and then we'll move on. And looks like Kaz is gonna video me, videoing myself. This is some sort of videoception going on there, vlogception. Shooting at 400 millimeters in very strong winds isn't the easiest. But luckily the Sony ZV-E1 does 4K at 120 frames per second, which meant I could slow down this B-roll. 
This is the shot I ended up with. I decided to play about with the white balance at the top, which helps split the ground up into three different sections. But that waterfall looks so powerful. I love it. So that is it for part one of my Faroe Islands adventure, and I haven't even covered half of the places that I've been to. There's still the Northern Lights, oh, that was amazing. Funninger Ridge, oh, the sunrise there. Then, oh, the Kala Lighthouse on Kalsoy. Oh, hey, there's, there's numerous places. I can't go through all of them right now because that'll spoil the next video. But if you did like what you saw today and you're interested in what's coming up next, then like and subscribe. If you didn't or don't give a shit, then don't like and subscribe. That is completely up to you. But if you do like and subscribe, you will get notifications when my next video is out, which should be some point in the future. Anyway, until next time, I hope you have a great time with your camera and happy snapping.